Good uh, morning. It's Tim Morge, MarketGeometry.com. It's a morning session. It's Friday. Got to look at the date. The 18th. You made it to Friday, folks. How's audio and video? Let me just double check. Morning, Paul. How are you? Andy? CJ? Everybody? <sighs> Let me take a breath. Hope I'm well. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm actually... I have the what's the right word a suite of physicians looking me over this morning so we'll know uh, a whole lot more mid mid or late morning I guess um, I'm breathing a little bit better this morning and uh, cross your fingers um, while we're waiting for people to wander in it's a we're, I'm actually on time so uh, we're a little bit early we, are, we won't be particularly long this morning because Thank you, Ron. I feel a little bit better, so um, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you have a lot of doctors. One of them is bound to be right. It's the only way to get better. Yeah, you're probably right, Eduardo. Um, this this will not be a long session because I do have to get over to the to the hospital, uh, and they're going to play Young Frankenstein and put bolts on my neck and stuff. But anyway, uh, hey James, how are you? Uh, quick question for all of you. We had talked about doing a multi-day seminar in Chicago that didn't happen. And, of course, it's a good thing we didn't plan it because I'd be, be in the no, no uh, travel mode. Would have had, we would have had to trash it. Um, what about, the, for the people that are here, what do we think about this idea? I'll put it up on the website as well, as well as the poll about time. And there's a reason why the poll about time has not come out. I'll make that announcement in a few minutes. Mary, are you here yet? I know Paul's here, because, yes, okay, Andy, and this also concerns you. Uh, Murad, did you make it this morning? You have this mor you have the morning off? Hi, Bob, how are you? Well, looks, like, looks like Murad had to go in and work, or he's still meditating. Um, okay. What about, now I know those of you that you're, how's she being? I know those of you that live in either in the south in the United States or in parts of Europe or, for example, South Africa, it's not particularly cold in January, February, March, but where I live, at the moment at least, it's, you know, you don't want to come to Chicago in January or February. What if we did a multi-day session? I teach all day on Sunday. We do a freebie on Saturday night with some drinks on me. All day teaching on Sunday. We'll get Shane, we'll get Murad, we'll get Andy, we'll get Paul, might even grab a couple other professional traders. Yep, big party, huh? And do live trading, no, no, log, live trading Monday and Tuesday from, you know, whenever, 6.30 to, well, well hang on. 6.30 to like, uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock or so, break for an hour, hour and a half of lunch. And then uh, in the afternoon, uh, we'll all recap as a panel and teach. Sound interesting? And, well, first of all, sound interesting? All right, then let me make it even more interesting. Where? Well, somewhere, somewhere warm in the United States. So either... Well, in the in the er, in the early spring, I'm thinking. San Diego. I hadn't thought of San Diego. Well, I'm thinking Arizona's a possibility. Vegas is a possibility. San Diego, I hadn't thought of. That's a possibility. Florida's a real possibility. Yep. 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 Florida's sticky. Not that time of year, though, Mary, is it? What do you think? Hawaii? No. <laughs> Not. No. Oh, you're in Florida, Paul? Yeah, Florida's... I, I, go, I used to go to Florida. I used to rent an island every March. Sarasota. CJ, there you go. Palm Beach. Anyway, what do we think? Okay, now I got one more question. Let me throw one more twist in it for you. Ready? Well, Michael, hang on. 
Will it be expensive? There's expensive, then there's expensive. A buddy of mine um, threw a three day in Chicago. They charge 4,900 bucks. Bit pricey. Bit pricey, don't you think? Yeah, no, that's way too much. I'm CJ. I agree. I'm I'm thinking much less than that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Eduardo says two K ish, two K ish. Yes, maybe just maybe just right under. Yes, for three days. Yeah, fifteen hundred or two thousand. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Jerry. Right in there. We'll see what we can do. A lot of it has to do with um, how much it costs us, not for accommodations for you guys. Morning, Mark. How are you? Okay, cool. Okay, the problem is we have to find a place that has a big pipe, so to speak, which means big internet, and then um, isn't like a trillion dollars for us because some of these places that are big enough for us to do because we're gonna get like 200 people, I guess, is gonna charge us a trillion dollars for a big pipe and a room. Yep, Vegas is definitely a possibility. Now, hang on. I got. Let me throw out another twist. Ready? If you're from Europe, if you're from outside the United States, and you don't want to travel, or if you're from the United States, you go. You know, I'd I'd swallow the fifteen or hundred or the nineteen hundred or whatever it is. But geez, then I got travel expenses and hotels, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. I keep getting away from the kids at night. What if we also broadcast it live? On a private TV channel. For those people. What's the butt, Eduardo? No, actually, okay, so here we go. Now. Eduardo says, yes, but you're talking a lot of tech issues. Okay, ready? Now for part three. So when that, actually, that would be pretty cool. Mary, what do you think? Haven't heard a thing from Mary. You think I'm out of my mind? Okay, ready, here we go. Had a long talk with my buddies at Stock Twitch yesterday. They went to the NASDAQ on Wednesday and were valued at a billion dollars. It's a seven-month-old company. They took a tiny amount of money from venture capitalists. Yes, exactly. These are, and both of these guys are on the forum, and one of them is here this morning, by the way, and is a member. And they, one of them has been on the forum since 1997, since the very beginning. And they said, why don't you do the morning thing in conjunction with stock twits. Let's work something out here. And what it brings to the table is this. They already have their own live streaming TV. They've already worked this out. They do it all the time. Now, they were pretty bad at it a month ago, but they're getting pretty good. It's, yeah, it's ain't great yet, but it's getting better all the time. The difference is whether or not you have a big pipe. If you have a big pipe... Your show looks pretty good. If you've got, you know, a DSL, you're in trouble. Well, I've got a T10. But any hotel I'd go to, I'd make sure it had wherever we do it. By spring, it'll be great. Yeah, absolutely. So, we've got a, a way to accommodate people. I know there's lots of people that want to see all of us in person. So, you'd be seeing people like Shane and Murad. Andy, could I talk to you coming? All right, cool. Andy's in. Well, no, we'd keep Paul home. We wouldn't let Paul go. That's what Mark says if Paul's coming, I'm, I'm not coming. We tie Paul up. <laughs> no, Paul has to come. He's our CTO. He has to come. And, by the way, if we do this, Catlin's coming on me. How's that? So you can all give him a big hug. And he's not here this morning to hear that, so don't tell him. 
Anybody think I'm nuts? Okay. All right. All right. Mary. Time to earn that fat salary I pay you. <coughs> Paul says he did think I was nuts, but now he's starting to like me better, especially if it's in Florida. Uh, well, Carl, actually, I have a special uh, request for you. Carl says he still thinks I'm nuts, but it's still a good idea. Karen says, it was yes, we did it in Denver. Uh, could we learn some of the new stuff? Yes, actually, what I was thinking was that what, what we'll do is, first of all, the material has evolved uh, greatly, I think, since Denver. We're much better at what we're teaching you. But second of all, um, we'll do action reaction lines and some other cool things. Oh, we're talking about, Scotty B, we're talking about maybe March. Eduardo wants to know if I have an online, on, outline. Eduardo, I woke up at 2 this morning and went, you know what? I got it. Let me do this in March. So I'll put the, I have to put the outline together because I have to go back to stock twits and say okay this is what I need from you. Now I need Carl. Oh about the previous session yeah we have it yeah no problem. Then the oh, the last part is we would also do a DVD of it. Michael no we're, Michael I'm not going to do what Larry Williams did and blah 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 because then we'd have the NFA and the CFTC on us. But I will do this. He's, he was saying that we could do live trading and everybody could throw their profits in for my charity. I will do this instead. How's that? I'll give, I'll, I'll give a big fat chunk and I'll tell you how much it is when we, when we do sign-ups directly to the charity. And if anybody that trades live wants to give money to charity, that's their own business. I'm not going to force them to do that. So this is this will be an extended advanced seminar. That's exactly right, Steve. The first part will be basic. The second part will be advanced. The afternoons will be even more advanced. Yep, absolutely. And you'll have Andy and Paul and a couple other specialists there. So if, let's say, we do some, see something interesting in metals, we can take two hours out in the afternoon and beat metals to death. Yeah, streaming TV for anybody that doesn't want to travel. For whether you know whether you said for foreigners, that's about the wrong word. For example, somebody from Australia may not want to actually fly here. It's a lot of money. Must be all the drugs. You got it. That's right. <laughs> uh, Joe asks, do we need to have the basic seminar completed to attend? Um. Um. Um, how about, I, how about I not, how about I not answer that question yet? Let me think about it. Like I said, I just came up with this at 2 o'clock in the morning. Scotty B says, will you have an ex advanced seminar online before then? Um, l let me not answer that yet. I, I thought of that at 2 o'clock this morning. How about that? We, we've got, I've got everybody thinking, so everybody send me emails about what you think about these ideas. Then I got, now I got another, another one. Ready? David says, how about we all throw $100 in the account, do some hunting on a couple positions, and maybe make enough to pay for the event. Um, uh, Andy, are you... Uh, yeah, NFA. That, I couldn't do it because I'm registered. A Andy, are you... You're not in the U.S., right? Are you, isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, Andy might be able to do it. Uh, we might be able to pool an event. I, I don't know. That's really tough to do and not get thrown in jail. But depends on where Andy's account is, and but we will look. I think keep it simple instead. But anyway, in the Denver account, in the Denver thing, we actually had people that brought their laptops and tried to trade along with us, which I think is stupid. You should just relax and enjoy it. But for each his own, that's all. Anyway, now to make it even cooler, last thing. Um, we've been talking about uh, bandwidth issues. Stock to it since wants stock to it wants in on the morning thing. They're not going to change anything. They're not going to run it. All they're going to do 
No, you don't have to bring your laptop if you don't want to. No, you can if you want to. You don't have to. Um, but what they will bring is if we get to uh, the point where we go, you know, I really hate recording using Camtasia or whatever the hell we're using. We can just, just, just use their streaming TV and it records automatically and then archives automatically and everything's immediately available in a private area. And for that, they want to taste. But by the same token, uh, it'll probably bring a little more professional, a little professionalism. And it'll also mean that Catlin won't have to do the IT on the morning sessions. He can just worry about the web page. Um, yeah, here, Mary says, video of you too so you can see me in the morning. I don't know if you want to see me in the morning, but yes, Stock Toots would like me, they would like me, they have this thing called, I don't remember what it's called, two camera or whatever it is, and the shots go back and forth as you talk between what's on the screen and then when you talk it, it gives you occasional shots of you talking, so yes, sadly, uh, you would be seeing me, at least if they get their way. My Fi service. Okay. Got it. Oh, not for pipe, but for personal. Okay. So anyway, uh, Carl, here's what I want to know. Could I do that stock twit things for these morning sessions? Yes, that's what it would be exactly, Taz. We would we would co whatever. We would just turn this. They would be like a co uh, sponsor of this. It would wouldn't change this at all, except it would change uh, the technical support to make it easier for everybody. Yeah, that's all. It wouldn't change anything else. wouldn't change the time slot. The time slot would be what we decide. It would just probably uh, look and feel a little bit better, and it would be a lot easier to uh, do the IT. So um, here's Carl. If you live in any of those areas, Mary, same thing in Florida. Or, or No, Mary, you're not in Florida. I'm sorry, CJ, Sarasota. Excuse me. Uh, Paul, Florida. Um, what I need is... Um, yeah, I know. Your teeth are floating. I'm sorry. Um, I need to know some interesting uh, places. Well, Mary, I'll talk to you about that privately. Um, I, I need to know some interesting places in, the, in those areas, in Florida, Arizona. Uh, Vegas, if you live there, Shane can take care of that. Somebody, if somebody's in San, San Diego. Um, interesting areas. Uh, I need you to scout out some uh, places that we can do it. And we're not looking for high end in the sense that uh, we don't want to spend very much money because the more we spend, the more we have to charge. So, what we need is big pipe. We need big internet. Yeah, I think February or March is probably yeah exactly. And good and good airport access as well, right? Naples, okay. Yeah, Mark says, Florida. I'm sorry, Chicago is just beautiful in in March. Cold mix of rain, sleet, and snow. No, I don't think so. Big internet means T3, yes. T3 or larger, that's right. Actually, these days, Taz, lots of places have T10. So I have T10 now in my basement, running up to my trading room. T3s are becoming uh, passe, as they say. Anyway, let's get on to the markets because I don't have that much time. I got about I'm until 7.30, so let's, uh, let's go at it, guys. So anyway, lots of news, huh? Cool. And Mary, you, I'll have, you and I will have uh, lots of uh, email coming back and forth when I, as soon as I get back from, and Paul too, as soon as I get back from uh, the doctors. Lots of things to talk about. And, and all good. Okay, so here we are. We're taking a look at the bonds. You can see what the bonds did. They came right down to this sliding parallel that we talked about, tested it, came up to the energy point, came down right down to the 618 projection off these tops, couldn't take out the double bottoms. Started to head higher. The rest is history, as they say. What's the key? When it starts to take out these canyon tops, your first clue is when you turn higher here. You should be looking at this in a bar by bar fashion. Now these are 1444s. You probably want to be at 352s, but 
If you're at 1444s, that's fine as well. It depends on how fast you trade. But you want to think about this in a bar by far, by a bar, ooh, I wish I could say this, Mary, in a bar by bar fashion. And the reason why that's important is we're looking at these double, let me circle them. We're looking at these double bottoms right here. We roll over. We've taken out all the bottoms. We've run into the sliding parallel and come back up. Left the double bottoms. We come right back up to the energy point. So now we're in a rolling chop on the way down, right? Here's the key. We hit the bottom down here. Now we start to head higher. We make a higher low. We hit the energy point. We come down. Now we start to take out highs. When we come back down, we don't make it to the double bottoms. So let's mark that in right there. And I'll make it uh, blue looks good. And I know it may seem like I'm asking a lot, but this is really how you have to, if you can't see it, now, now look, I'm not telling you that I measure every bar and go, look at this bar, look at this bar, because after a while of doing it, you process this information automatically without thinking. And no, I'm not, I'm not reading the screen, so don't, don't bother to type for a while, because I've only got about... Uh, 45 minutes or even less 35 minutes so I'm going to just talk here for a little while and see if I can get some quality information for you guys after a while of paying attention bar by bar this becomes more and more automatic and you will do it without thinking about it so you, here we have double bottoms sitting here we know we've come down and we've tested the sliding parallel now we've headed back up and we've got one two three two after we drew it touches on this sliding parallel. The reaction line worked nicely and held price here. The question is, are we going to come back and up and touch it again? Well, take a look. We have double bottoms. This is the, ba by the way, this is very basic action reaction line theory. So people that are asking about advanced material, just file this away in the back of your mind because you're going to see this over and over and over when we do diamonds. But now let me go ahead. We come down to the double bottoms. We make it to the energy point. We come back down. Making it to the energy point, we should now make it once we head lower and start taking out these lows to the left. We should make it down to this sliding parallel down here. But take a look at what happens. We make a higher low. Then we take out this high right here. Uh, I need to invent some new colors. Do you know that? I swear to God. Can you make money inventing colors? Uh, I don't like purple. I don't think you can see this, but maybe I can make it more golden. Oh, that's pumpkin-y. All right, let me go for straight yellow. Well, we take out this high here. When we take out this high here, and now we come up and you can see us test the sliding parallel. One, two, three drives to this. This We don't want to count this one because this is where we anchored it. We don't want to count this one because this is where we anchored it. So now we have one test on the bottom and one, two, three tests on the top. If you want to call it a trading range, you can call it a trading range because we've got five touches, right? One, two, three, four, five. We've got six touches, actually. You can call this a trading range with a slope. However, what I don't like about it is if you turned your monitor 
this trading range is becoming more and more efficient now to the upside because we're making higher lows relative to the trading range. You can see that here. This low is higher, this low is higher. We're now at the energy point. We spawn one move down, and again, what do we get? A higher low. The, the bells ought to be going off in your head. Something's wrong with this picture. And sure enough, this doesn't spawn resistance as it should. Instead, we blow right through it as we come up to it. Same thing up here. Now, we finally get up to the, remember this red, the red median line. Let's talk about that for a second. So I know a lot of you are going to say, well, you know, if it gets up to this red median line, I'm just going to get short. Well, that's fine. You would have gotten your eight ticks out of it. If you want to play it for eight ticks, that's fine when you get the double top. But in terms of the size of these bars, if you think about this red median line, this red median line has done nothing for you. This upper median line parallel has done nothing at this point before it gets tested here. And the median line itself never got tested. So we traded within this trading range the whole time. Now we break through and we come up here. I don't test this, as my dad would say, worth a tinker's dam, although I have no idea where, this, where that comes from. I don't trust this at all. What do we get? We get a small impulse down because we're still cascading higher. Regather our energy and then blow through. Now we're making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. This has all the makings of a corner trade except for we're not really at an area, but look at it. Look at the bunching. Double bottoms, double tops, double bottoms. This is what the bunching at a corner trade looks like. So let's squeeze in for a second. And I want to do two things, if I can. First, let me go to chart objects. Uh, formations tool, bye-bye. And Mary, yes, I'll get that to you. I, I did not start the upload. I fell asleep too early last night. I'm sorry. I also have another seminar for you that I'll upload from May. Um, okay, so I wanted to grab this, and pardon me for thinking on the fly, but I have a very odd, busy morning today. No, 125. Okay, we don't make it to the 150 either. Okay, neither one is meaningful. I have nothing up here at all. For me to spawn the corner trade, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna circle it. Let me draw a new upsloper here. Uh, what did I do? Thank God Mary's here to teach me. I swear to God. Okay. And then let's shift that one as well. And let's make that one shift but green. So it's a modified shift, green. That's another possibility. But it's upsloping. What if, it's a big what if at this point. I have no sign of weakness. Don't get nervous. It's okay. These are bonds. It's corner trades. What if, and it's only a what if at this point, what if that was it? I don't, the reason why I don't like this is because, let's see, this should be the C, not this. And I should have my C here with a stop, a sell at the retest, and my stop five ticks above. And the reason why I don't like this as a corner trade setup is because we're not in an area where we should be really running out of energy yet. So let me erase that and go through this again one more time real quick. 
because we blew through the down sloping upper median line parallel and this was acting as a switchback this magenta line and we closed above it with great separation I know I don't have any area here that should hold price or show where price is running out of energy and that's one of my personal requirements now you don't have to have it for yours but it's one of my personal requirements for setups for corner trades so this if we were at the switchback and the C was right here I'd be putting in my C here selling it at a retest here off of these double tops with a stop five ticks above but you can see we're not in an area where it's meaningful so didn't work but now you can see all the clues that I would be thinking when you first start out you're gonna to have to actually literally if you want to get good at this print these rascals out and then sit on the living room floor with a box of crayons and go okay higher lows higher lows took out this high okay here's my other tests now I've got a trading range and I actually do this on the weekends you guys might think I'm nuts but I'll have 100 200 300 charts printed out in front of me and I'll just sit there with a pencil and go through them or the other other side of that if you don't want to do that do replay on Ensign or replay on eSignal or replay on NeoTicker and go through markets and mark up charts at a slightly faster speed and practice tennis players practice baseball players practice traders have to practice you can do it on paper with crayons which is what I do I like to hand draw or you can do it on replay with Ensign which I do or NeoTicker which I do uh, eSignal has some limited replay capabilities I don't know if anybody else anybody else mention another one that has replays yeah those are the best I can think of but a me broker I don't know anything about it though yeah, okay Sierra charts okay there you go ninja trader there you go I think you get better insight by hand but that's just me trade navigator has a replay there you go all right so a lot of people are getting replay good that's good well now use it okay all you people that told me it if you're not if you're not replaying on a regular basis you should be trade station is bar by far that's fine bar by bar is fine and just walk through it there's nothing wrong with that that's right Carl I've seen Carl do actually some magnificent presentations in group by group doing bar by bar thank you for reminding me Steve I take back all the bad things I said about the Cruz brothers no I don't <clears throat> anyway let's go to hopefully you thought that was interesting let's go to somebody had a vested interest in the Aussie didn't they Aussie 240 let's see what we have going and you can see the pullback continues and where'd we go we went right back to the center of the range is what we were talking about yesterday now the question is what happens when we get here well school's still out we don't know so don't know not saying the play's over and in fact probably we might want to stalk if we get down in this area you might want to stalk along but it's not time yet this position is not right but so to speak it's 705 Let's see what else we can grab Aussie yen no uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add a new one in because I just don't have enough time today uh, to add in a new currency pair but I'll do it on Monday if you want um, let's take a look at I'm, I'm time challenged today I'm sorry guys let's look at Trying to think from yesterday what was interesting. I know this is refresh, but the heck was that? Okay. This is 20 minute yen. I'm just going to. Let me just dump all this stuff. If this is what we were using yesterday, I must be uh, sleeping because I don't remember any of it. So 
What's the first thing my eyes see? Test the prior lows. And I'm going to introduce a term. I've used it loosely before, but I'm going to introduce it because it's going to be in your lesson that will be out shortly. I'm cleaning up the slide so they actually... Up, or how about this? I was going to say so that you can read them, but here's the truth. So, so that they're up to my standards. And that's important to me. It's not important to everybody else, but it's very important to me. I know everybody wants everything yesterday, but you know what? I don't release things until they fit my own personal standards because they have my name on it. And someday, I won't be here. And I want people to look back and go, hey, that's pretty darn good. And once you release it, you can't take it back. Same thing with the lessons. So, All right, so here we go. Here's our big, fat, wide trading range. And you can see we've got a mountain. We came up. We've come back and tested the base of the mountain. The canyon rim is perfect. Fills the canyon nicely as well. So this thing is doing, in big blobby structures, and market structure, it's doing everything it's supposed to do. Now notice, we come and fill the mountain. You've got one, one interesting clue. After filling the mountain, we don't come back down to the base. We have a nice inner mountain. We had higher. Now we consolidate. Right here. Now, and what I said before, in the prior example, I'll say again, practice, practice, practice. I see these things. I don't have to draw them in all the time anymore. Sometimes I do. But if you draw them in, after a while, pretty soon you can see them. I haven't drawn any median lines yet, any trend lines, any fib stuff. I'm just taking a look at the basic clues of the market structure. And I want to use that to help me. And this is cash Aussie, excuse me, cash yen, not yen futures. I want to use this to help me. These are this, this is the skeleton that I'm going to put on the flesh and the clothes, so, so to speak, which will be lines. So I'm going to introduce this term. It's a multi-pivot line. You can one, two, three multiple pivots. Here's another one. Generally, this is just a this is just a trend line, one two. Well, once you start to add more than that, like you did on here, when you did down here, just call them multiple pivot lines, MPLs. We'll do that for short. Okay. That way, we have a term that we're going to be using, especially when we get into the advanced course, multi pivot line. Yep. Okay. Everybody. Any interest in stocking is short of J.P. Morgan on Monday, David. If you remind me, yes, I will. So we're building some terms for the advanced material that we're slowly going to bleed into. And then we'll do an advanced seminar. And we'll be using these multiple pivot lines. They don't have to be horizontal, which you're going to see in the in this in the step-by-step uh, -step lesson coming out this weekend. They can also be sloped. Multiple pivot lines, okay? Yes, I'm, yes. Uh, well, I'm saying that because I know Mary will add it to the glossary, and she'll probably add, actually take some of this clip and cut it out and just put it right there. Um, I just have to upload the AVI for her. Yep. And, Mary, I'll drop you an email about that. We'll, we'll, I'll tell you exactly where the website is and what the FTP is and et cetera, et cetera. Oh, you're recording. Okay. You just grab whatever you want. It's fine. So... Now, if you want to draw something, me, if you can't see this stuff, start out by drawing the structure. Now, some people can see it or feel it or whatever you want to say. They can see between the lines. Murad can see it. Not everybody can. But before you start drawing in 
the fib stuff and the median lines and the action reaction lines and all that other stuff look at the big picture the market structure because it's going to give you the clues of what's important because otherwise you're going to go hey I got this median line and it's going to be junk it might be great but a lot of times it's junk and that's why I get people that say hey I have this median line didn't work worth crap well okay did you take a look at the market structure should we interpret the poke through the medium through the the low one no you know what this is so big and broad that this is relatively meaningless the importance is that the baseline held at this point you're worried about it but the moment it starts to take out highs to the left, David, right here, the moment it starts to take out these highs, David's question was, should be worried about, about this poke down here. At the moment it's unfolding, yes. But as, as soon as it starts to take out these highs to the left, it's forgive and forget. How's that? Tim Downey, that's it. Hey, I like that. Ready? Mary, here you go. Tim Downey says, that was only a peak over the other side of the fence. There you go. MPL, multiple pivot line. Classic wash and rinse, Krishna. That's exactly right. There were all kinds of buyers here. They stepped out of the way. They let everybody push it through, and they said, thank you. And these are everybody that got short. All these guys that were selling new lows, when it starts to take out these highs, they're, that's them puking. Exactly right, Krishna. A classic wash and rinse. Yep. It's the closes, yes, that will give you the clue. Yep, okay. So now you got this in. You can either see it like Murad does, like I do, or if you're having one of those days where your eyes aren't quite as good and I have them, then take the time to draw it in. Slow down and draw them in. For clear, this is a multiple pivot line right here for clarification, Michael. This is a, here, oops, this is a mess. This is a multiple pivot line right here. Here's a touch. Here's a touch. Here's a bunch of touches. Here's two more touches. This is a trend line. We'll just... We'll just keep, we'll just keep, I don't know who invented the word trend line. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody, you know, I'm not even going to mention a name. I'm sure somebody says that they invented it in like 1967, something ridiculous like that. This is a trend line. This is a multiple pivot line. N yeah, no, I'm not even going to say those names, but you get it. Trend line because it has only two touches. That's right. Yep. Or it's a 2P. Yeah, well, we've got to be careful about using 2P, Thomas, because then when we get into counting, we go 0P, 1P, 2P, 3P, then you get confused. I would I would say that, but instead we'll just use trend line. Because some people do, I don't do the counts very often. They don't help me. I can show you how to count. I can count my sleep. That's why I don't use them, because I can count now without thinking about it but I, but when we do advanced seminars I'll show you how to count I'll show you how to use zero to twos two to fours one to threes etc etc um, and for some people they're useful for me I guess I, I I should slow down because I should remember that not everybody sees what I see so in advanced we'll go through that and it'll help some of you and some of you will just say well that's just that, that doesn't help me at all all right so now we've got the big stuff drawn and the key I would say to you is, if you can't see it, take the time to draw it. Now you got this in, you can play with these kind of things. I've got a low, a high, a low. Nice touches here on the median line. Does it give me a trade? No. I can shift it if I want, because it, especially because it's a currency. I don't think it's going to give me anything, but let's look. Is there a trade-off of it? No. So we know the probable path of price, and I think it's this. 
Now you'd have to just roll up your sleeves and either do an inside median line, which means go perhaps from this A here to here is one possibility. That gives you a low a low risk, high probability entry here on this retest right here. Let me anchor it. I click and anchor it. Now I'm going to widen it out. Okay. And you can see here, You could enter here 90, 60, your stops, 90, 45, 15 pip stop. And you'd be hiding underneath the base. You'd have to weigh that against what's your, what's your target. Well, at this point, this hasn't formed. So the target would be either looking to the left, this high, this high, or a test of the prior canyon rim. Then you can decide whether or not that risk, which is a really small, that's a nothing stop, is that worth this? Yeah, it probably is. So if you're an active trader, you might have looked at that. I'm looking, hang on, somebody says, somebody's asking me a question here. Uh, are you talking about here? Yeah. It describes action beautifully, just doesn't, just doesn't give me any trades. And of course, this exhaustion shows great weakness, and that's what leads to this trading range. I'd use them both. That's right, Don. Yep. I'd have the blue and this shift in. The idea of this was not to spawn a trade or anything. The idea was just to walk through how to set up market structure, how to look for a multiple pivot line. I'm walking you into some new techniques. Hey, Aaron, how are you? How's the little guy? Uh, you, I don't think you were here yesterday when I said congratulations. Aaron, what's his name? Aaron says everything's good, and his name is, come on, come on, Emmanuel Tobias. So welcome, Toby. So welcome to the group, Toby. And by the way, just so you know, Yuha, who's in Finland, had a little boy yesterday as well. So we're adding members even as we speak. Yeah, I understand your question, Tom. Tom's asking me about signs of weakness. It wasn't the point to spawn. I wasn't trying to spawn any trade or point out um, that this was going to do X or whatever. The idea, be, let me just squeeze in again. This was purely to walk through. This is a multiple pivot line. This is a multiple pivot line. This is a trend line. Here's our trading range. Now you've got the market structure. Now you can draw in whatever you want to draw. No, no, no. The baby's name is not Yuha. Yuha is one of our, one of our guys. And he had a baby. I don't have the name yet because he's got back in the hospital. So, Aaron, the, your little guy, is healthy. Toby's healthy. That's all you can ask for in the world. God bless you, my friend. Absolutely. So you use the market structure to define where you choose pivots for median lines, etc. Well, Michael, if you start out with the market structure, then the lines you draw will be much more informed and much stronger. You won't be drawing things that are hanging out in space. 
So start out with the market structure. If you can't see it because you're relatively new to market structure, then take the time to draw it in first. Slow down. That's my first word of warning to all of you. Slow down. And then, so here we go. Yeah, let me just say it again. You can hear me now, Michael? Okay, so one more time. If you can't see the market structure, slow down. Practice with the market structure. Draw it in well before you think about the median lines. Understand the market structure, then draw in things like fib retracements, median lines, etc., etc. Then your lines will be much better. Practice and review that first lesson. But you'll see when the new one comes out this weekend, all three will fit together and you'll go, oh, okay. Why do I call trend lines trend lines? Not what I usually think about when I think about a trend line. A trend line is simply two pivots that are connected. That's all. Yes, I know that's not a classic trend line, that's all. But we have to come up uh, we have to come up with a common language. We could we, we could just call it a pivot line. You want to call it a pivot line, PL, instead? Make it happier? All right. Mary, we've officially changed that. PL. And then a multiple PL. Or you could say, if you actually want the truth, Andrews would say, 2PL. Sometimes he would say 3PL, and then he would say multiple PL. Okay? We just want to be consistent. Yep. All right? Because we're going to be throwing out a lot of terms. Don says when he thinks of multiple pivot lines, he thinks of price hitting it from both sides. Well, that's kind of more of a balance line. Yeah, 2PL. Two, two that's where we're going to go. Okay, so we're there. All right, so before we run out of time, because I've only got about six minutes, will there be a glossary? There's already a glossary. Peter, front page. It, we're just building slow. It'll get there. Look on the front page of marketgeometry.com. It's, it's, it's growing slow, but it's growing. It will be moving, just so you know. The glossary and the chart tips, charting tips and um, the, the Hall of Fame that we talked about, which I'll talk about on the web page this weekend, We'll be moving to crayontrader.com, which is not up yet. It'll take a little bit of time. We're still looking for a web designer, if anybody's interested or knows one, as well as a graphics designer. All right, so let's go take a quick look at, we've got some open hunting positions. <clears throat> Hogs doing okay. No, not S&Ps. We don't have one in the S&Ps. Oil and S&Ps, however, hogs are doing fine. I'm, I'm not tempted yet to move my stop. Why? I think it's still too close. I want it to take out these lows. I want to give it every opportunity to mature. Everybody with me? On them hogs? Okay. Yep, I got yep, got short at 5395, stop 5527. Uh day before in day, day before, right after the morning session, we got filled. All right. Then Mr. Sean and I, I'm not going to put the blame on him. And I bef when I show you this when I show you this chart, I want to know what what you think. Here you go. Look where oil is. Stopped out by uh, six cents. Now somebody said, "Dang." Let me ask you a question. What's the flaw? In fact, I got to I got to change this. It says Sean gets the wabbit. The wabbit gets Sean. What's the flaw? 
Somebody said it yesterday. Yeah, you know what? Here, Joe Allen said this, and this is exactly right. You guys seeing me take a loss. Now, this cost me nothing. It's, it's 440 440 a big figure, so it's a little bit under 800 bucks. All right? And you, you saw me tighten in my stop. No offense to women everywhere because they take it, they have harder things in life than men do by far, trust me. Um, I take it like a man, or I should say I take it like a woman. I got stopped out. It's okay. Nope. All right, here we go. There's two There's two problems here, and and both both Paul and Rob guessed the first part, which is my stop should have been above, should have stayed above this swing high. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But somebody said this yesterday. Yeah, this was a wash and rinse, absolutely. The original stop was better, absolutely. Come on. Th this was just this was just poor on my part. How about that? But, you know, d it should make you feel better to watch other people. Hey, losses happen. It's part of the market. The move down after my entry didn't make a new low. That's true, Paul. But there's something else inherently flawed with me hunting for a 6 to 8 or 10 week trade. And somebody mentioned it yesterday. Can you think what it is? Scotty says, I, uh, I asked you if you wanted to get out of break even. No, I wouldn't have changed that. Okay, that's a, I'll just do it. Ready? Well, too little action, yes, we are trading. We forced this trade because we wanted to get a hunting trade on, no doubt about it. Ready? I'll show you. No. Ready? Here's the problem. If I'm going to hunt for a six- to eight-week trade in crude, watch. I don't want to be a buck 90 range bars. I want to be trading here. Wrong time frame. That's right. And I said, well, you know, I'll just stick with this time frame because we've been working with it. He said cavalierly. Remember me saying that yesterday, anybody? Go back and watch the tape because I stepped right in it. Anybody? No one rem remembers that? Because somebody asked the question. Somebody said, why don't you back? Okay, all right. If you're going to hunt, there is no St. Tim. There you go. And there, and you know what? I thought about actually scratching the trade when Scotty said, hey, have you thought about scratching the trade? Exactly because somebody had said right before that, why are you in this time frame or this range instead of dailies or whatever? And I answered it cavalierly. Then Scotty said, have you thought about scratching it? And I actually thought about scratching it and saying, you know, I'm actually in the wrong time frame. I had to back up and be in the dailies. And we should reevaluate re that. Who said that? Does anybody remember? Be honest now. Who said that? If not, we'll just go back and find the, check the tape. Jack, David T, David Teach says it was Jack Glazer. Well, Vincent, a buck ninety range. He, Vincent says, "How do you know which time frame is right?" A buck ninety range is not something that you want to trade for a six to eight week move. How about that? Too much noise. Jack says it wasn't you. Okay. Well, we'll go back and figure it out. Anyway, the important point was. I was in the wrong time frame. The moment somebody asked the question, I knew I was in the wrong time frame and that I was forcing a, tra a trade. But, and I've said this before, and you guys, you, know, you can buy it or not buy it, but this is the truth. First, I was in the trade, so I'm not going to bust the trade. Second, 
Are you ready? It's better off. AK wasn't here for the discussion. Well, AK, you probably would have just told me to get out. You're in the wrong time tree. It well, yeah, to follow the plan, sure. But it's be it's better for us as a group. The, this remember, this all began. Yeah, I'm about done, Tim. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, because I gotta go. I gotta go to the doc. So let me finish this thought. Then we'll be done. It's better off for us as a group. Remember how this all started. Somebody asked, "Will you show us your trades as you hunt this fall, as we set them up, so that we can watch you and maybe paper trade them?" So it's better for you to watch me. And as I said, when I hunt, I'm about fifty-fifty. And you do learn more from mistakes. That's exactly right, Jack Glazer. So rather than take the trade off, I said, you know, let me just play the damn hand. And if I get stopped out. I get stopped out, then we can talk about being in the wrong time frame, forcing the trade because we were in congestion. Okay? Everybody makes mistakes. There is no St. Tim. It should make you feel better about your trading watching me step in a big pile of steaming mangu, or whatever it's called, Mary. I pooped the bed. Everybody makes mistakes, sure. Uh, I was just sticking to my plan. Not only that, but I, th I thought, look, if I made a mistake, let's play it out. And then it'll become not, the loss is not going to hurt me that bad, first of all. But also, then we can reiterate, this is the problem with this trade. And hopefully it will mean more to everybody, which is take a look and see if, are, before you jump in, where are you at? It's like, yeah, it is a checklist, like a NASA space project. That's exactly right. So that was the idea. Daily oil looks completely different from the 190, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm not so sure that I'm bearish. That Tom says, was this a trade for six to eight days or six to eight weeks? When I hunt, I'm looking for six to eight weeks. So I'm in the I was in the wrong space frame. Yep. So anyway, I'm out of time. I'm going to the doctors. Hopefully, you guys learned something from that. We got lots of stuff to talk about over the weekend. There'll be lots of posts from me. The lesson should be up this weekend. Aaron, congratulations. Yuha, congratulations. Thank you all for the good thoughts. Where will the posts be? They'll be on the front page of marketgeometry.com. Then, read them. Anybody has any suggestions, please just just lay me out with them. I need suggestions. If you live in a, a warm area in the, in the uh, south in the United States and you have suggestions of where we can go, I'm all ears. If you have uh, suggestions for time, I'm thinking March, but I'm all ears, okay? Paul and Mary and Andy expect uh, some emails. I know everybody wants to go to Vegas. We'll see. Um, I'm going to go beat some doctors to death and uh, hopefully... We'll, we'll, we'll do good. So, Arkansas, that's not going to happen, Don. <laughs> Hopefully, I will bring back good news. I feel better. I got, We have two young members of the group now, Toby and I don't know you how's baby's name. Congratulations. I'm glad we all made it to Friday. Have a great weekend. There will be lots of posts to catch up once I get back. Take care. I'm Tim Moore from MarketGeometry.com. I'm going to see the doc. Good hunting to all of you. I'll talk to you on Monday. Take care.